All right, we're back with the second segment of the Harry Thomas Show Week in Review. Today is Saturday, February 23rd, 2008. This came out on the 20th of January. Space arms race is most definitely on. U.S. concerns over China's satellite intercept test has nothing to do with keeping space weapons free. The neoconservative leadership in Washington, who are hell-bent on dominating space for their own means, have previously stated that they fully intend to militarize and fight from and into space. Now, they've consistently had carried out research on lasers that could knock out enemy satellites, and the Bush administration has repeatedly ruled out the idea of a global treaty banning putting weapons in space. And they assert that they have the right to deny access to space to anyone who seems hostile to U.S. interests. Want to talk about uh, power, power hungry. Now China is accusing the U.S. of hypocrisy in space. And this come out Thursday, February 21st, 2008, of the Press TV. China's voice in caution about the potential international effects from the U.S. shootdown of the spy satellite. Now, Russia and China are proposing a treaty to ban weapons in space and the use and threat of force against satellites or other spacecraft. But Washington rejects the proposal as unworkable. It's unworkable because it goes against their whole militarization plan that I was just pointing out. And this is just crazy. Now, the satellite strike shows U.S. missile defense works, says uh, Robert Gates, the U.S. defense secretary. And he said Thursday that the successful shootdown of the rogue U.S. spy satellite demonstrated that America's missile defense system works. What they're being accused of is testing this, uh, this defense program, and it looks like they're right. Asked about China's request that Washington provide information about the satellite strike, Gates said. We're prepared to share whatever is appropriate. You can read all this stuff for yourself. I mean, this is just nuts. Now, experts fear that the debris isn't the only fallout from the satellite shootdown, and that's because now the, it's said that the Chinese Foreign Ministry is issuing a statement demanding that the U.S. share the details of the shootdown, and now that both Russia and China will use this as a, a reason to step up development of their own anti-satellite weapons. You know, and this is just, this is the fallout that's coming is, uh, you know, they're going to start building up their weapons. What are we going to have? Stuff coming, uh, the fight, the space war is on now. Oh my God, neo-fascist pigs in space part one, full spectrum domination has been the agenda for the globalists. And this is a flashback to October 19, 2006, the London Independent uh, had a headline, Space, America's New War Zone. And it's long been the globalist neoconservative agenda to weaponize, fully militarize, and aggressively control space in order to achieve what they refer to as full-spectrum dominance over the entire planet Earth. In order to understand what the world will be like in 25 to 30 years and how the new world order will micromanage the entire globe, this is the area that needs to be studied now. In this p part two, study, I will break down the total militarization of space of the, and the agenda to be implemented and how it will provide the final piece in the jigsaw for the globalist vision of a one world order on the planet. Now this is a huge article. I implore you to go read that for yourself. The second part is also up there. This is an article by Steve Watson. This came out October 19, 2006. And it says here, the motive for militarizing space has been clearly advanced in internal policy documents. Both the U.S. Spacecom documents, Vision for 2020, and the Long Range Plan outlined a new military vision to dominate the space dimension and integrate space forces in, a, in order to acquire full spectrum dominance. Presented like comic books, these two documents are anything but humorous entertainment. And the mission statement of the vision document demonstrates this. It says, U.S. Space Command dominating the space dimension of military, military operations to protect U.S. interests and investment. 
integrating space forces into war fighting capabilities across the full spectrum of conflict. This is their mission statement. This stuff was set up in 96, 98. These, these, these documents come out. You can read all about it for yourself. I, in fact, I challenge you, if you don't believe me, to go research all this stuff for yourself. I mean, this is just crazy. Crazy. Every week, piles and piles of this news. They're just setting it up, the empire, building and building until they just come in and crush down their arms of world government around the whole world. Law ever become a reality in America? Some fear any nuclear, biological, or chemical attack on U.S. territory might trigger just that. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. From my cold, dead hands. Charlton Heston's famous declaration captures a truly American value, the overarching desire to protect our freedoms. But gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. U.S. troops also arrived, something far easier to do even now thanks to last year's elimination of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. That forbid U.S. troops from policing on American soil. If martial law were enacted here at home, like depicted in the movie The Siege, easing public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. And that's exactly what the clergy response team, as it's called, helped accomplish in New Orleans. Uh, Jeff, the primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with, and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. In a lot of cases, these clergy would already be known in the neighborhoods in which they're helping to defuse that situation. For the clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law is the Bible itself, specifically Romans, Romans 13. Because the government is established by the Lord, you know, and, uh, and that's what we believe in the Christian faith. That's what's stated in the scripture. Civil rights advocates believe the amount of public cooperation may depend largely on how long they expect a suspension of their rights might last. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12 reporting. And according to Tuberville, during Hurricane Katrina, the clergy response team provided 38 chaplains a day around the clock at eight different camps. And I don't understand how we as a people could morally just sit back and do nothing. Every week there's more and more stuff coming out. The rigged Gitmo trials prove that the 9-11 official story is wrong. Scant evidence against the suspects, say prosecutors, yet the convictions are already assured. Now this is uh, four prosecutors at the Guantanamo Bay case, okay? They assert that the trials are rigged and that the convictions are already assured despite the fact that there's scant evidence to link Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and his uh, uh, cohorts with 9-11 proving that the official story is fable and real perpetrators are being protected. Week after week, ex-congressman says that the U.S. government created al-Qaeda involved in 9-11. In Every week there's people coming out, whistleblowers, and people say, oh, if 9-11 was an inside job, you know, people would be coming out and telling. People have been coming out and telling. Hundreds and thousands of people are coming out. But the main, the controlled mainstream media seems to want to ignore it. The controlled Congress wants to ignore it. The controlled, every controlled body of, of government is, is in a control mechanism to ignore facts. Congressman Daniel Hamburg said that the government created Al-Qaeda and was involved in bombing its own citizens on 9-11. He told a national radio show that elements of Bush administration assisted the attacks to the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Oh boy, says here, author of uh, San Francisco Chronicle piece, warning of intermittent camps, says government bombed its own citizens. You can read this stuff for yourself. It's out there all in the news every week documenting this push. The CIA set up 12 bogus companies, mostly in Europe, after 9-11, says this report. This come out February 18, 2008. According to the paper, the agents posed as employees of investment banks, consulting firms, and other fictitious enterprises with no apparent ties to U.S. government. 
just another documentation of total corruption. I will be back in segment three. We've got a epidemic of police brutality. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.